Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Let's Play episode. We are playing on death mode and we are doing the rogue class and it has been so much fun so far. Last episode we defeated Calamitous and the Aquatic Scourge a bunch of times and we got this amazing weapon. In between episodes I had gotten so many requests for the Skyfin Bomber that I went ahead and farmed it up and it is such a cool weapon. Another thing I did in between episodes was work on our jungle quite a bit. I built this arena and it should be perfectly fine for Plantera. I think we're going to do really well on Plantera with all the gear we've got since we already defeated Calamitous. Plus there's some new items that we can craft, so I want to go ahead and craft an upgraded accessory. I think it's called the Ruinous Medallion. Yep, and it's an upgrade to the Coin of Deceit. You just need Essence of Chaos and Unholy Cores, so we can craft that. What this does is it makes stealth strikes only expend 50% of our max stealth and it increases rogue damage and rogue critical strike chance. Another thing we can craft are the terror talons and these are just the combination of chlorophyte, souls of fright, and the feral claw from the jungle. Well this is pretty cool. That's so many projectiles. Unfortunately though it doesn't do that much damage. It is pretty cool though. The next thing I want to do is break these fuel factories and let's bring them down to our base because someone had a fun idea. Oh, each one of them had 999 in them, by the way. So every once in a while you should check on them and I probably won't check on them nearly enough if they're up here. But someone had the idea of putting these in our base as if our NPCs are working making fuel cells, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and put these in the dungeon. So unfortunately these take up a ton of vertical space, so I have to move these lanterns over a little bit, but I think it still looks pretty cool. And now the NPCs have something to do while they're in their dungeon, they can be making us more of these power cells. Another thing that I wanted to craft is the Ambrosial Ampule, so let's see what we're missing. It looks like we need the Corrupt Flask and Archaic Powder and Honeydew. So the Archaic Powder is pretty simple. We just need to combine the Ancient Fossil with Ancient Bone Dust and Demonic Ash. And then the Flask, I think is also pretty simple. Uh, it's just the Fetid Essence and Rotten Chunks. And for the last part, I think we need Living Dew first. I'm starting to get the hang of this recipe. I've crafted it several times now. And that's just a bunch of jungle stuff. So there we go. And now we can do the Honeydew. And that just requires the gypsy powder, which I was lucky enough to get while I was in the jungle. I actually farmed a lot of stuff up in the jungle in between episodes. Making that arena, you end up having to kill so many enemies. And now that we've got this, I think we are able to craft our ambrosial ampule. So here we go. And it rolled as camouflaged, which gives 6% stealth generation. And I think that's a new roll that you can get in the 1.4.5 update. So what this accessory does is increase our mining speed by 25%, we emit light, it increases our defense, gives us 5% damage reduction and increased life regen. It also gives us poison, freeze, chill, frostburn, and venom immunity, and honey-like life regen with no speed penalty, and it also gives us cold protection, which is pretty cool. And we also have 8 life fruits, which I found in the jungle while we were building our arena. So let's go ahead and use those. And now I think what I want to do is get some solar veils, if that's possible, before fighting Plantera, just because at this point we're already going to be way overpowered for Plantera, and I kind of want to just see how crazy powerful we can get before fighting Plantera. I've never tried this before, but I've heard some people say that to get a solar eclipse, all you need to do is go farm some of the lizards in front of the jungle temple. So hopefully we will get some lizard spawns. Let me just kind of mine down through all of this. So here we got our jungle temple, and hopefully we can get some lizards to spawn. At the entrance of our jungle temple, we've actually got a little place right here where we got three solar tablet fragments, and we're getting some spawns here. Excellent. So we can just kind of hang out right here for a bit, and we should be able to get plenty of materials. Oh yeah, here's a ton of them. Excellent. We got six solar tablet fragments now. We just need two more. Well, this is actually a pretty good method to keep the enemies from the inside from accumulating too much. I can just keep throwing these and it helps boost the spawn rate. 
yeah, already after doing this for a couple seconds, I've got my solar fragments over here. Okay, well, let's go ahead and craft our solar tablet. Let's start this up and try to kill as many things as we can during this eclipse. Already seen some solar veils on the ground. I love how much easier this event is at this point in death mode versus master mode. Trying to get the Terror Blade on Wendy was so much pain. I think I probably spent like a good two hours doing solar eclipses. Ooh, we have a Mothron. I love how aggressive this weapon is with homing. Well, I found a pretty easy position to stand in. I just kind of sit right here and keep on shooting, and we take out the enemies so quickly. Well, I'm starting to get banners, and that's a good thing. That means we've killed a ton of these enemies. Yep, we got two banners already. Well, I got one banner down. Well, we just finished the solar eclipse. I'm just collecting all of the last items. And I think we've got more than enough items here. 123 solar veils. That should be more than enough to craft all the different things we need to craft with it. The first thing we can craft is this vampiric talisman. It's the upgrade to the rogue emblem. You just need 10 solar veils, and then it now will give us lifesteal on crits. It slightly reduces the total amount of damage you get, though. It's only 12% instead of 15%, but that's still incredibly good. And now we can craft this awesome looking rogue armor set. It's from Hallowed Bars and Solar Veils. We can craft the Totality Breakers. So all we need to do is craft Molotov Cocktails. And now we can finally craft the Totality Breakers. And that's just a combination of the Consecrated Water, Desecrated Water, the Spent Fuel Container, the Solar Veils, and Molotov Cocktails. Ooh, this is pretty sweet. And now let's see what this new armor set can do. We've got 88 defense and 146 damage. And now we've got 81 defense and 150 damage. So we lost some defense, but we did go up in damage. And our critical strike chance is 89. And it used to be 71. So we gained a lot more critical strike chance. So I think overall our DPS will go up a ton. Now I think it's time to head on over to the jungle because I think we are beyond ready to fight Plantera. This should be a pretty simple fight, but you never know in death mode. It can always be a lot more tricky than expected. It looks like we're getting healed quite a bit almost every hit now. Oh, another life fruit. This is like having like a miniature version of the vampire knives. So cool, even the same sort of animation. I remembered that I saw a Plantera Bulb all the way down here, so let's go ahead and start up this fight. We just gotta move quickly and get back to our arena. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no, we're taking a lot of hits as we try to get to our arena here, but we should be fine. Okay, almost there. Perfect. And we have stealth built up already and rage. So let's just go ahead and start this off with some rage. And this should be a fun fight. I really enjoy fighting Plantera. And this Plantera seems pretty aggressive. But with all this self heal, it's not gonna be a problem. This is actually a bit tricky. Plantera is staying really close on me there. But this weapon's doing quite well. Ooh. I'm so tanky that I'm kind of choking on this fight and it doesn't really even matter. Let's try using some other weapons. Okay, this one seems like it's doing pretty well. Oh my gosh. Plantera is going crazy. Okay, let's try the Totality Breakers. 
Ooh, this is doing well. Just hitting everything. And there we go, some adrenaline. Man, I love that Plantera charges so quickly now. It's very difficult to dodge. I'm actually kind of glad we're extra prepared for this fight. Whoa, more tentacles. Was that added recently or was this always kind of a last phase? I don't remember in Magnus having two tentacle phases, but I might just be forgetting. Okay, let's just get projectiles going all over this arena and hopefully we'll kill some stuff. This is a really interesting fight now. Plantera's kind of got like this diagonal pattern going. There we go. Plantera has been defeated and we've got all sorts of new stuff unlocked. Plantera is always just such a big turning point in any Let's Play because we immediately can get so many new things. We've got 21 Living Shards, and that's the main thing I'm looking for from Plantera. Then we have the Lore, which increases item grab range. And of course, the Temple Key, so we can go fight the Golem eventually. We were quite prepared for that fight, and of course, the Vampiric Talisman, I think, is very powerful, and that probably helped us a ton during that fight. It looks like we can get some new items now too. We've got the monkey darts and the glove of precision and also the glove of recklessness. This one decreases rogue attack speed by 20% but increases damage and crit and velocity. And this one increases rogue attack speed but decreases damage. I'm gonna buy both of these but I don't think they're really gonna be something I use just yet. And we also have this new dart. So let's see what this does. Well, this kind of looks like just a standard sort of dart. I'm interested to see its damage. And now with Living Shards, we can craft Life Fruit from Planty Mush and Living Shards. So that is so nice. We just craft a whole bunch. And we'll have full life now. It doesn't look like she's selling Living Shards, but she is selling the Treasure Bag. And it's only two Platinum. Uh, so maybe we'll just grab two of those. And we've got 36 living shards now. Excellent. And here we go. The Terra Disc. I'm so excited. Well, I just re-rolled the Terra Disc to Unreal. It's pretty expensive, so Unreal will be good enough for now, even though Flawless is the best. And now let's take a look at the damage it can do. So it's doing like 2,000 damage. Pretty good. And let's see what these lethal monkey darts do. They do like 1,700 damage, 1,600, 1,800. These are surprisingly good for something you could just buy from an NPC. Now let's go head over to the dungeon because now we can get ectoplasm and we definitely need to get a lot of that. Whoa, this shoots through the ground? Okay, that makes this Terra Disc even better. This is going to make the dungeon so simple. And I like how easy it is to light up the area throwing these around. And for those who don't remember, we switched the world around, so this is a new world, and that's why the dungeon isn't mapped out, even though we did already explore it. But this should be essentially the exact same dungeon, since we used the same world seed. Oh, here we go. One of these cultist guys. They drop so much good stuff. But they're pretty tricky. Luckily we can do some good damage. Mainly they drop Lumino, which is really helpful. One of the issues that you can have with the Terra Disc, though, is if you throw it, then you may have to wait a while for them to all come back. Like right now, I'm still trying to attack, but it's not letting me. Ooh, a Paladin. Hopefully we can find it and kill it. Because we need to get a Paladin's Hammer. Yes, this will be amazing if we can get one. Well, we at least were able to kill him. He didn't drop anything for us, though. 
Ooh, here we go. This is the astral chest. I remember now, we need to defeat Astrum Arius in order to open this. We don't need to beat Plantera. Plantera unlocks Ectoplasm, but Arius will give us the Astral Chest. But at least we found it. I'll finish off this Paladin and then we can mark that chest so it's easy to find again. Ooh, we got a Paladin Shield. Yes! So now we've marked this chest so it's easy to find and we can continue on. I cannot believe we got a Paladin Shield on our second Paladin. That is actually really good luck. Ooh, we got another Paladin already? We also have some really good spawn rates on Paladins right now. Although we need to be really careful, because... Man, we are getting overrun in here. Uh-oh. Oh crud, we're gonna die. Oh my gosh. No! <laughs> oh no. That was too much stuff happening. But overall, getting a Paladin Shield and a Black Belt, that's pretty good. And we could turn all of these little Ectobloods into Ectoplasm. And I think this Ectoblood got a Resprite. It looks pretty cool. And next, we need to craft some of these cores because that will help us craft a bunch of cool stuff. And we'll need to combine them into a Core of Calamity as well. And now I think we've got everything we need to upgrade to the Asgard's Valor. It's a combination of the Ankh Shield, the Ornate Shield, Shield of the Ocean, Abaddon, the Core of Calamity, and Life Fruit. And there's something else I saw, the Mechanical Cart. We still haven't crafted that, so we'll go ahead and put that on. And we can also craft the Frigid Bulwark. That's pretty good because that's a precursor to the Rampart of Deities. It's really similar to the Frozen Shield from Vanilla Terraria, but right now I'm just going to put it away because I think we'll be using the Asgard's Valor instead. And this is so cool because we can actually do a dash now with our shield. So let's go ahead and put it on instead of our Evasion Scarf. And now we can do a Holy Dash. And yeah, it looks pretty awesome. I think I want to put something else on over it though because it kind of looks a little bit big and covers our face. I crafted the Round Shield from the Weapons Out mod. And that's just as a vanity. It's just a really small shield and it kind of fits better with the rogue class in my opinion. And now that we've got ectoplasm, we can craft the talisman cards. Oh my goodness, this is insanely powerful. 5,000 damage per second. So it's dropped down a little bit more to like 3,000, but that's still really good. Now that we've defeated Plantera, we can also get perennial ore. And I know that will give us lots of good upgrades. So I'm going to go ahead and start digging around with a Spelunker on and try to collect some of this perennial ore. Ooh, we got two chunks over here. It's a pretty easy ore to find after Plantera because it's just such a bright green and it seems to be pretty plentiful. I just put on tool time in combination with our Ambrosial Ampule, so we are digging so fast now. This is insane. It's always a fun moment in Terraria when you reach that point in your progression where you start just digging through the world as fast as you can run. Whoa, we found the ice laboratory. Excellent. Well, let's take a look and I'm going to have to be careful to not just break everything when I run in here. Okay, we'll just break that. This is pretty sweet. Let's see what we got. We got a frozen turtle shell. And we've got tons of these up here. But luckily we're so fast, they can't really do much to us now. And we've got more plating and all that good stuff. But what I think I'm going to do is pick up some more of these fuel factories. And now it's time to keep on digging. Ooh, what is this? We have a special treasure. And we got the Onyx Excavator. Awesome. The Onyx Excavator is such a cool mount. It's one that I got right at the start of the Anna the Archer series, which was amazing luck. But it can basically dig through a lot of stuff extremely quickly. At this point in the game, it's not that much faster than how fast we can dig, but it's still pretty awesome. 
Plus you can attack with your normal weapon while you dig. So it's just so cool. We've definitely reached a new level with our digging. Dig right through the lava. <laughs> Although we haven't found much perennial, so I think we might have gone too deep. Yeah, we're finding more perennial up here now. Well, we're finally exploring our world a little bit more. I've been wanting to do that for a while. Oh, and we have the sunken sea. Oh, and here's the sunken sea lab. Awesome. Oh, and we got more of these fuel factories. And this spawn is actually kind of interesting. It spawned pretty far off to the right of the sunken sea biome. Ooh, this is the best perennial place. We're getting so much of it now. This is just beyond satisfying. I probably have way more perennial ore than I'll ever need, but it's just too fun to run around digging this quickly. Well, we've dug all the way to our jungle, so I think it's time that we head back. And let's go ahead and put all this away, and let's see what we can craft now. Looks like we can craft a whole bunch of perennial bars. 110, that should be more than enough. We got the reaver headgear for the rogue. And the legs and the chest piece. And we should be able to craft the wings as well. And they automatically rolled to warding, which is pretty awesome. We're going from demon wings to these reaver wings. They got a horizontal speed of 8, acceleration multiplier of 1.5. And we've currently got 6.25 with an acceleration of 1. And I think I might actually switch to the Reaver armor because I think it's going to be pretty good. It bumped our defense by 7 and our damage is 268 with 79 crit. And with the Reaver on, our damage went down by like 1 and our crit went down by 2. I think having the extra defense is pretty good. It also says that you emit a cloud of spores when you're hit. So I think I may stick with this Reaver armor for a little bit. Plus, it has that added bonus of using this booster. And another thing we can craft with our perennial is this mangrove chakram, which looks pretty awesome. So let's give that a try. This looks like a pretty cool boomerang, but I'm not sure that it's actually going to be better than the Terra disc. But this chakram does combine to form the elemental disc later on, so we'll definitely keep it. Well, I think that's a great place to end this episode. We defeated Plantera, we did the Solar Eclipse, we went to the post-Plantera dungeon and got a new ore, lots of new items, and next episode we're going to be able to do some pretty cool boss fights. Let's take a look and see what are the next boss fights for us. We've got Leviathan and Astrum Arius and Golem. Well, if you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe so you can catch the next episodes. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time.